Hi, my name is Michael and I'm the creator of Quest Map Pro. This is the first in a series of videos on how to get Quest Map Pro up and running and fully integrated into your project. In this video, we'll go over the very basic integration process and follow it up with future videos covering processes such as setting up Quest Map Pro in your own HUD, further configuration and more advanced use. Before continuing, I'd like to recommend that you go through the entire integration process even if you don't intend to use some of Quest Map Pro's features. This will ensure that you don't miss any vital steps and you can go ahead and disable or remove those features after the fact. And one final note, if there are changes to this process in the future, they will be highlighted in a pinned comment underneath the video, unless they are substantial changes in which case the video will be remade. With all that said, we can go ahead and start the integration process. I have created this tutorial project for the purpose of following along. So the project is available for download in the description of this video. To begin with, we want to add some components to our controller. So if we go into content, blueprints, and then open up our controller or your own controller in your project, we want to navigate over to this add section here and type in Quest Map Pro. We want to add these three here. So we'll start with the Quest Map Pro Manager. We'll just leave the name as default. Then we will add the map system. And finally, we will add the compass. The next thing we need to do is add an interface to our controller. So while we're still in the controller, if we click on class settings and navigate over to this section here where it says impl implemented interfaces, click on the add button and we look for controller. You want to add BP int quest map pro controller. Once we've added that, hit compile and save and you should see a couple of functions down here. These two are already in the tutorial project, but these three are from Quest Map. For the purpose of this tutorial, we are only interested in this bottom one, guess get Quest Map Manager. So double click on that and just drag a reference to your Quest Map Pro Manager in and hook it up to there. Once that's done, hit compile and save and we can close the controller. The next thing we want to do is add an interface to our player character. So open up your player character in the tutorial project that is in content, blueprints, and it's called BP Player. And same thing, navigate to class settings and find the inter interfaces section. Click on add, and this time search for player actor. We want to add BP int Quest Map Pro player actor. Once again, we will see that there is an interface function here. Double click on that and just give it a reference to your player camera. So in the third person project, we would use the follow camera. Hit compile and save and we can close the character. The next step we want to do is add some input mappings to our project. So if you navigate to edit and click on project settings, we want to find the section of project settings called input. Under input, we want to add one axis mapping so click on the add button and find it in here. And this one will be used for map zoom. And we want to bind that by default to mouse wheel axis. Finally, we want to add a handful of input mappings up here, action mappings. We want to add toggle map, toggle compass, toggle mini map, And then there's a few other optional ones that I'm going to add for this. We're going to add center map on player. We're going to add cycle mini map zoom. So we're going to go through and set some default setting uh, default buttons here. For toggle map, we'll use M. For toggle compass, we'll use C. For toggle mini map, let's use tab. For center map on player, let's just use something like P. Cycle minimap zoom, we'll use X. Now that we have our input mapping set up, we can go back to our controller and actually implement them. So open up your controller, get to the event graph, and we want to start looking for our input mappings. So let's start with toggle map. And on this one, we just want to drag in a reference to the map manager. We just want to look for toggle visibility. We can hook that up to pressed and make sure our animate is enabled. You can disable the animations in the map manager itself. So if you set it up here, then that will give you the most control. We'll also look for toggle compass and drag off the compass manager for this one. And again, just look for toggle visibility. Same deal set up to animate and you can disable the animations in the compass settings. After that, 
the next one we probably want to do is toggle minimap. Now this one has an extra step in it. We want to use a flip flop. Now the way a flip flop works is the first time you run it, it will fire off as A and this Boolean will be true. The second time it will fire off B and this will be false and it will just cycle between the two. So we can use that and drag a reference into the map manager and look for toggle minimap. Give ourselves a little bit of room, hook both A and B up there. Drag off of is A and use the not boolean to invert the setting. So that way the first time it will close the map, the second time it will open it. The next one we're going to set up is the map zoom. So if we get map zoom in here and we want to drag off the axis value and use a compare float. Compare float does as it sounds, it compares the input value to whatever it's set to compare with. So in this case, we're using the map axis, uh, the wheel axis, sorry. So when we scroll up, it will be a greater than, when we scroll down, it will be less than, and when we are not scrolling, it will do nothing or give us an equals in this case. So drag in a reference to the map manager and just look for trigger map zoom. And we want two of these one hooked up to the less than and one to the greater than. Make sure the target is connected on both of them and for the greater than, set zoom in to true. The next one we want is we want to use the center on center map on player. And for this one, once again, use the map manager reference and we want to drag off here and look for center on location. Hook that up to pressed. Make sure this is set to world map. And then what we want to do is get a reference to our player character. Now, if you do not have one, such as this one, this setup does not have one, you can use a get player pawn and then just get actor location off of your reference. Plug that into the location there and that one's all good to go. Finally, we have the minimap zoom cycling. And for this, we're going to create a variable, call it something like minimap zoom and make sure it is set to integer. Hit compile and save and set the default value to one. Now for this, we're going to actually need to get the input mapping in. So mini map, there we go, cycle mini map zoom. I'm going to drag this guy in, use an add to add one to it. Then we want to run it through a mod and we'll set the mod to something like three. So the reason I'm using three is I'm going to have three levels of zoom for the minimap. So like low, medium, high zoom. If you wanted four, you would set this to four. What mod does is it takes the input value and cycles it through values up until that value. So in this case, it'll go zero, one, two, and then once it hits three, it'll reset it back to zero. So we can use that to set that there and that will ensure our value is always between zero and three, but never including three. And then we want to drag in a reference to the map manager again and use the node set zoom. Hook that up there. Make sure this is set to minimap. And we want to drag off of target zoom and use a select node. Don't use select float. Use the select with the wildcard on it. We want to add an extra option. And then we want to use the minimap zoom to control those. So these are the different zoom levels that you're going to have at each level. So for these, let's use something like five, 10 and 25. This is probably going to be too high for this map and it's going to vary wildly from map to map. So you'll need to mess with these values and get them right for you. And that is all the input mapping is set up now. Now that we have our input mappings all sorted, we can close the controller and we can actually work on the map that we're going to use the image. So what we want to do is go to the quest map folder, go into blueprints, actors, and then into helper actors. And you want to drag this one here, BP underscore quest map pro underscore map helper into your scene. It doesn't matter where you put it, it will adjust itself in a second. Now we want, need to create two target points for this to tell the edges of our world. So if we type, if we click on add actor and type in target point, we can add one of these and we're just going to call this one target point northwest and I'm going to switch over to top down view. Now this northwest 
one needs to be at the most northwestern point that we would have in our map. So in a map like this that isn't a square or even a rectangle for that matter, we need to use the most western edge and the most northern edge and put it where those two would intersect. So if I just bring that down here and I put that on this edge, I'm just going to raise the grid up a bit to make it a bit easier. And then we drag this up until we hit the same coordinates as the northern edge, which is there. That's now our northwestern point. We want to do the same thing for the southeastern point. So I'm just going to hold Alt to create a copy of that one and drag that down here. Make sure it's on grid. Yep. And we're just going to name that one target point SE. We can go back to perspective mode now and click on map helper. And we want to set these points up in here. So for northwest, we would use target point NW. And for southeast, target point SE. Now that those target points are set up, we need to hit Update Helper Actor, and that will move the actor into the middle of our world. It will also give us our world size here as a map, and we want to then go through and configure our setup here. So for the render target resolution, I'm just going to set it to 2048, and I'm going to disable enable tiered zoom transitions. There will be a separate video going over what this uses or what this process is and how to do it, and it's a very powerful tool, so I'd recommend checking that video out. What the last thing we need to set up is the capture height offset. Now the important thing here is that anything you want to be captured needs to be below the map helper's height plus this. For this case, it's pretty easy. We can just drag the map helper up here and everything is under it. But if you had a very large world with mountains, you might want to add an offset in and use that. Now that that's all set up, we can hit capture map image and that will capture into this folder. So let's open up a content browser. I'm just going to dock it so we can see. And we're going to go to this folder, which is Quest Map Textures World Map Helper Capture. So Quest Map Textures World Map Helper Capture. And you can see I've actually got two there. I'm not sure why I have two, but you can see this is our map capture. Now, if we hit save on this to save it, we also want to just make sure it is set up to be in the UI group for texture group. The compression settings are set to user interface. And under texture, we just want to hit advanced and change the filter to nearest. You can leave it on default if you want, but sometimes when you're panning around in the map with the mouse, it will give you some artifacts. So I definitely recommend setting it to filter uh, nearest. Sorry. Hit save and close that one up. And then we just want to go back into our... Actually, let's give that a name so we know which one it is. Let's call this tutorial map. We're going to go back into our controller, click on the map manager, and we just want to set the map texture here. So what do we call it? We called it tutorial map. And with that, we should be ready to go. So let's close our controller up. We can close this one here as well. And let's hit play. And you can see we've got the compass up in the top. We've got the mini map and the player is spinning around on the mini map. If we hit M, you can see our map comes in. We've actually got map fog turned on. So let's turn that off just so it's a bit easier for testing. Go into the controller, click on the map manager, and just go to configuration, world map configuration, and enable map fog on world map. Set that to false. Compile and save that. And let's try again. And there we go. So we have our map. Now, because this is a rectangular map, it's automatically set it to the zoom that will ensure that the map is on the edge of the world. We can zoom in, we can drag around, we can set waypoints, and they will appear in world, and all that sort of good stuff. Now, obviously, there is quite a lot missing in, in here. We don't have landmarks or points of interest or any of that set up, but that will come up in the next video, couple of videos where we go over those. So if you have any com comments, questions, or feedback, please feel free to leave them in the comments below or contact me via Discord or email. Cheers.